Hi, everybody. Everybody, I'm back. And today, today, Gina Young is going to show you all how to make stuffed pork loin. Here's what you will need. You will need a pork loin. This here is not a pork tenderloin. This is a pork loin. You will need sazon, as well as onion powder, garlic powder, black peppercorn, and adobo. Those are the spices that I'm going to use today. If you prefer to use other spices for yours, feel free. Absolutely you can. We're going to use a little bit of chicken broth. I have some olive oil, as well as Italian style blend shredded cheese. And I have <clears throat> red bell pepper. This is one and a half red bell pepper, just sliced, just like so. And I also have frozen spinach. Feel free to use fresh spinach if you like. Now, this is my kitchen twine that we're going to need to tie our beautiful meat up. And you want to have your kitchen shears near as well. First thing that we're going to need to do, you want to wash your meat. And those of you that know me, you know that I love to clean my meats with lemon, lime, lemon or lime, vinegar, and salt in cold water. So I've washed this. <clears throat> now there's two ways that you can cut this. Uh, and the cut that I'm going to do today is just a butterfly, and then we're going to pound this meat out so that we can roll it. Okay? So, but before we get started with that, there's a couple, see, there's things that you want to do. You want to address any fat that may be on to your pork loin, making sure not to cut any meat off, all right? Just like this, in this manner. All right, now let's turn it over, and what you'll find, I have a paper towel so that I can blot dry the meat if I need to. Now what you'll find here is the silver skin, okay? Some of the fat cap you can keep on, um, and the fat will actually render off when it's cooking. If you leave the fat cap on it, what will happen is you leave the fat up top, and that those juices will just render down into your beautiful meat. Okay, I have this boning knife. The boning knife is going to help you to be very precise with taking this fat cap off or your silver skin. Okay, so take off what you can. All right, I'm going to continue to take this off and then I'll come right back. Okay, everyone, I've cleaned up my pork as much as I could. Now what we're going to do is I'm going to butterfly mines, okay? So I'm just going to go right through the middle, and we will never, you don't want to take your knife and cut through this, okay? So be very careful in understanding and knowing where the bottom of your pork loin is so that you can stop in time so that you don't cut through because we need this to remain whole in order to roll this, okay? So just take your time. Like I always like to say, hey, listen here, if you can have patience in that kitchen, trust me, you're gonna have some good cooking, all right? So just cut in this manner, being very careful not to go all the way through. Now what I like to do is I like to go in Cut a couple slits, just a couple slits, guys. Don't get crazy. And don't go all the way through, okay? I do that so that my spices can get well into the meat, okay? So let me show you what the bottom side looks like. See that? Nice and beautiful. Never going through, never cutting through, okay? Beautiful. See that? See the seam there? no cuts through that's what you're going to want and next what we're going to do is i'm going to take my rolling pin and i want to pound this bad boy out listen here i'm going to use some elbow grease and i'm going to pound this thing out until it gets nice and thin not too thin 
but it will actually double in size you know if it's here it'll come out this way okay and it'll get much thinner and it'll be very easy to roll so let me do just that and I'll be right back okay everyone what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to show you just how I'm going to pound this it'll be in this manner with my rolling pin I'm just going to hit this bad boy just like this okay until it gets nice and flat okay everyone you can see that I pounded this out just beautifully okay and so now what I'm gonna do I'm gonna go in with a little bit of oil okay and this is olive oil I want to give it a nice rub down okay and what this oil is gonna do this oil is going to help to adhere the spices and it's also gonna make sure that we have a nice juicy pork loin never dry so take the time take the time to rub the oil in the inside okay and you can rub the outside as well all right in this manner all right just like that now the first spice that I'm going to use is my sazon okay let me wash my hands guys anytime you're dealing with raw meats you always want to wash your hands before you cut your spices because you don't want the chance of spreading bacteria to your spices okay so just wash your hands we're going to put all of our spices on the inside as well as the outside okay we're going to give this a nice sear in a little bit of vegetable oil Put that sazon on there. That sazon is going to give you a nice, beautiful, it's going to give you a beautiful color and yet a beautiful taste as well. Okay? Take the time to rub that in. Okay? Nice and beautiful. And then we want to wash our hands once again before you grab your other spices. Just like this, guys. I am so excited to be able to share this recipe with you all. I've been wanting to share it, and so here I am. Here I am making it. Let me wash my hands, everyone. Just like so. And then we'll put our other spices in. We're going to proceed with onion powder. <clears throat> Gotta get you some onion powder in there. Onion powder is beautiful on pork loin. Like I said, this is not pork tenderloin. This is a pork loin. Get you some garlic powder in there. You all that know me, you know that I love to use garlic powder. Garlic powder is going to make just about everything taste beautiful. Okay? Just like this. Now, there's another ingredient that I almost forgot to tell you about, but I haven't, um, but I'm glad I didn't forget. I'm going to put some Virginia ham in here. And if you're able to find prosciutto, you could use prosciutto as well. Okay, it's really up to your discretion. If you can't find Virginia ham, just go to your local deli and tell them you want a really nice ham sliced very thin. Okay, and so the ham that I preferred today was the Virginia ham, nice and fresh, and I had it sliced just perfectly for this dish. Like I said, if you can find prosciutto, use prosciutto. Okay. I'm going to put a little bit of adobo in here. Adobo is going to give you great flavor as well. All right, just like this. Nothing hard about this recipe. Everything that I make in this kitchen is so easy. Here's my ham. Let's go ahead and open it up. This is the Virginia ham I was telling you about. And here's what it looks like. It looks just like this nice and beautiful go ahead and lay it down okay in this manner and you want to cover the whole loin okay just like this you want to get down here just tear that off make it all fit just like so okay now when you're choosing your cheese to stuff your pork loin. You can use mascarpone cheese. You can use ricotta cheese. You can use this Italian style cheese that I'm using today. You can pretty much use whatever cheese you would like to use. 
You can use Parmesan cheese. All right, this cheese here that I have, it has a couple different cheese. It has mozzarella, smoke flavor provolone, it has Romano and Parmesan, Fontina and Asiago cheese. That's why I choose to use this every time. This right here, this is amazing, okay? Now we're gonna put cheese in here two times. So we're gonna put some cheese on our ham. And then we're going to put cheese on after we put our beautiful spinach. Like I said earlier, if you wanted to use a fresh spinach, absolutely you can. And you don't have to cut the stems off or, or anything like that. Okay, see that? That's what you do. Now, making sure if you're using the frozen spinach like I'm using today, you want to make sure that you've squeezed all of this dry, okay? Let's go in with our beautiful spinach. And you want to kind of break it up a little bit. You don't want huge clumps, okay? In this manner, just like this. And then we're going to put our red bell peppers in. The red bell peppers is going to help to keep this nice and moist and juicy. As well as the ham and the spinach will do the same thing. That's why I chose this ham and that's why I chose the red bell peppers. Now the red bell peppers, they look beautiful in here as well. That's another reason why I chose those. You can always use... Um, the red bell peppers that are roasted in the can if you would like to, okay? I just honestly, I looked at the roasted bell peppers, and I know I can roast my own, but I looked at the price of them, guys, and it was a little tiny jar, and it was $5, and I thought, I'm not doing that. I want to get me a fresh bell pepper and call it a day. <laughs> so that's how that went. All right, so here's this, and then... You want to put real bit red bell peppers. Really, you know, honestly, you don't have to be as vain as I'm being in here. See how I'm trying to make everything neat? Because once we get to rolling things, everything's going to get, you know, pushed a little and, and changed in direction. Some of you might just want to throw the stuff on there. If you want to, just throw it on. <laughs> are you that person are you that person that would just throw everything on there or would you make it look nice and neat <laughs> what person are you because i know there are several people out there <laughs> that do suit you know that does different things okay now here's what we're going to do we're going to put a little bit more cheese okay and literally this is just going to be a little bit guys all right, in this manner, right on top. And then we're gonna give this a roll. And then we wanna make sure that you take a little bit more of that olive oil. And with that olive oil, we're gonna oil the other side and season the other side as well. Now, this is my pan that I'm gonna use. It has a little bit of vegetable oil in this pan. And what I'm gonna do, the reason why I've chose a pan so large is because I wanna sit that loin down in here and I wanna give it a nice sear before it goes into the oven. It's gonna go in the oven on 350 degrees for around about 40 minutes, but we'll see exactly how long it takes because oven temperatures may vary. Um, we're gonna give it a nice sear on each side, and the sear means we wanna make sure it gets a nice golden brown crust on every side to sear in those juices before this goes in the oven. So let's get to rolling, okay? I'm hoping that you all can see very well. Let's go in and just start to roll. Don't worry about nothing. Just roll, baby, roll. Okay? Let's see. Here we go, guys. Gina Young is working. I'm working in this kitchen, guys. You hear me? And I'm having the time of my life sharing my... And see how I'm kind of using my other hand 
to press everything in and then we're just coming this way until we close okay but you want to make it nice and tight okay just like this make sure everything's in there nice and tight make sure that whatever falls off is just fine okay that's no worry don't make that a worry just kind of press it aside and you're okay so now let me grab let me wash my hands and then i need to grab my oil so that we can rub this we can season it tie it up and get it in that frying pan okay everybody i have my oil Go ahead and put you some on the outside as well, and then we're gonna season it in this manner. Just like this, all right? I just washed my hands, let's season once again. And then I'm turning my pan on to medium high heat so that we can sear this. Beautiful, gonna give you that beautiful color. Mm -hmm. Go in with this, onion powder, garlic, if you want to make a gravy, you can make a gravy for this. Absolutely, you can. Now, if you don't know how to make gravy, you can always check out my video for how to make smothered pork chops. In that video, I show you how to make homemade gravy. So if you're curious and you wanted to make a homemade pork gravy, should be sure to check that video out. I'm not going to do a gravy for this tonight, okay? This is going to be so juicy, you don't need anything. Get you some adobo on there. And you want to let those spices soak in there before we sear this for around about maybe 12 minutes, and then we'll sear it. I don't feel like my pan here is going to be long enough for this long pork loin. So let's see. I don't feel like it's big enough. I'm going to hunt around for another pan, see if I can find one. Okay, everybody, so we have a little dilemma, but nothing's going to stop Gina Young. You hear me? Okay, so the dilemma is I don't have a pan large enough to sear this. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to bake it off. All right? No problems. Don't worry. All right? So you take your kitchen twine. We're just going to go ahead and start. Our, our spices have soaken in for around about 12 minutes. Then you're just gonna go in. When you tie this here, don't get crazy, guys. Like, you don't have to, you know, tie it to where you won't be able to cut it off, okay? Just tie it just enough to be able to hold it, all right? And we're gonna put several of these on here, and it's gonna hold your beautiful pork loin together, all right? And you just kinda squeegee your way over all right, and tie it once again, just like so, in this manner. Boy, am I excited to be able to share this recipe. Woo, I'm so excited. My word. Oh, yeah. The time is, and the time is, 10.13 p.m. <laughs> and here I am making recipes for you all because I love you guys. <laughs> you all are my family. Absolutely. I don't care what time, what day or night. I'm going to make recipes no matter what time. I'm going to show you all how you can make the same recipes that I can make. It's going to taste beautiful just like mine tastes. I just want you all to know that every single thing that I can do in this kitchen, you all can do as well. Absolutely you can. All right. Okay, I'm just going to squeegee my way on down a little bit further until I get all the way to the end, just like this. So I've went out and I purchased 
a um, aluminum pan and this pan is large enough to hold our pork loin and with these extra bell peppers I'm not gonna toss them you could put them in the freezer you know if you have leftovers in a little freezer bag or you can just I'll put my pork loin here and the juices from these vegetables are just gonna soak down into that juice you hear me oh yeah we don't we don't waste anything in this kitchen nothing is wasted okay so then I'm okay let's go ahead squeegee this all the way down and then it looks like I'll just put this one and one more okay just like that give it a nice tie and then cut off the extra you don't need all that extra all right you can see how the seasonings have started to soak down into that meat see how the seasonings have got nice and dark that's what you're wanting okay we'll put one more on just like this okay and then we'll come through this side Okay, everybody, going in the oven. Here's what we're gonna do. Let me point my camera towards our thing. Be very careful. Pick her up. Get on there, baby. Do good for me to get nice and golden brown, get a suntan, and be nice and juicy. <laughs> I'm crazy, but guess what? I'm serious at the same time. <laughs> so let me show you. You can see, can you see the inside? Nice and beautiful, okay? That's what you're wanting. Put this in the oven. I'm gonna let you all know how long this took to cook in the oven. When it's done, I'll come back. We'll give it a try. I'm gonna let you all know what this tastes like. So, some of you might say, so where does the chicken broth come in? The chicken broth is gonna come in right now. I'm going to take a little bit of this chicken broth. This is chicken broth that I used for our other video earlier today. I'm just going to put a little bit in the bottom of our pan. And I also have some oil in the bottom. Just enough, but not too much, guys. Don't get crazy with this because we're not trying to steam our meat, okay? Just enough to keep it nice and juicy. All right, going in. I'll be back. Okay, everybody, we have our roast in the oven. Now, some of you might say, okay, Gina, so now, now that you couldn't sear the pork loin and get that beautiful golden brown crust on it, how do you plan on getting that golden brown crust that we all love? Well, here's what we're going to do. That pork loin is going to let off some juice, okay? We're going to take and we're going to baste that pork loin with its juices, and during the end of the cooking process, we're going to crank that heat up to 375 for around about 5 to 10 minutes. And what will happen is you'll get that beautiful golden brown color that we all love. Okay, everybody, check them out. I am so proud of my beautiful stuffed pork loin. Now... 350 degrees, 45 minutes is all it took. You want to make sure that your pork is cooked to 160 degrees. What you're going to do is you're going to take some aluminum foil. Let me grab that right now. And we're going to make what you call a tent. And all that we're going to do is we're just going to take the foil and just tin it ever so gently, okay? I'm going to push it down onto here just a little bit, and we're going to let it rest. We're going to let this rest for at least 35 minutes before we cut down into this. Because if you cut down into this right now, what will happen? Absolutely, you all know what will happen. What will happen is your meat will go flat. All of the juices will come running out. If you don't give it a chance to let the juices kind of reiterate back into the meat. Okay, and the way to do that is by letting your meat rest before you cut it. This meat is done. 
We're going to let it rest. And just when you all thought, mm hmm, mm hmm, I know some of you all thought, oh, shucks, you don't have a pan big enough to sear the meat. How is she ever going to get that nice and golden brown? Listen here, guys. When I told you to trust me, just trust me. Trust me, your, your girl knows what she's doing in here. You hear me? <laughs> we work our way around everything. And with God, all things is possible, like, like you all hear me say all the time. Absolutely. No worries in this kitchen. If something can't work out, we just work our way around it. And that's how I am in life. Absolutely. So let's cover this bad boy up. 35 minutes. We will come back. I'm going to slice down into here. We're going to give this a taste. I'm going to let you all know what it tastes like. Okay, everybody, we let our meat rest. Now let's time to dig in. Beautiful, beautiful. All right, and I just have a cooling rack here that I covered with foil. What you want to do, go ahead on in here. And we're going to take this, just like so, lift him up, come on baby, sit right there and just look purdy. Because <laughs> you are purdy. Alright, let me adjust my camera. And then we're going to start slicing down into this baby. Are you ready? I'm ready. Let's go. Be sure to let it rest. You have to. See that there? Nice and beautiful. And here's the thing. That's the end piece. Look how juicy. Look, look, watch my finger. Watch this finger here, guys. When I touch that, can you see the juice in that area? That's how you know that you're gonna have juicy meat. Mm, mm, mm. I didn't come to play with you guys today. When I get in this kitchen, I'm serious. I'm here to show you all how to do it and how to do it the right way. Let me grab my scissors. Look at this, guys. Isn't that a beautiful picture? Beautiful picture. <laughs> oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. I get myself excited in this kitchen. You hear me? All I'm doing right now is I'm just going to go in. And I'm going to cut the twine that we put on here. If you cut one side, you should be able to pull it out ever so gently. See that there? It comes out easy, okay? And we'll just keep cutting as we go. Okay, in this manner. Okay, let's continue. And you cut these medallions as big as you like to cut them, okay? It's up to your discretion how you cut them, all right? If you want them nice and thin, then you cut them thin. You want big, thick slices, then you cut them thick, baby. You hear me? That right there. That's what you want. See that cheese? Mm. Mm, I'm not even going to I'm not even going to say it. Can you see that ham in there? I know you can see. <laughs> oh, I cracked myself up, guys. I cracked myself up. And I thank the good Lord Jesus Christ for giving me this gift and being able to share my gift with you all. Absolutely I do. I thank you, Lord Jesus. I thank you, Lord, for all of my viewers and subscribers. I thank each and every one of you who has subscribed and watched. I thank you all who message me. I'm so grateful to be able to share my recipe with the world. In hopes that you all will make it. <laughs> and let me know what you all think after you feed it to your family. Look at this. Whew. It don't get no better than that. This right here can be served on New Year's. This can be served Christmas, Thanksgiving, dinner, barbecues, cookouts, birthdays, whatever it may be. Just serve it. Serve it to your loved ones 
and watch them lose their everlasting mind when they see just how beautiful she is. Because they're going to see. And they're going to say, where the heck? Where the heck did you get this beautiful recipe from? And be sure, be sure to tell them Gina Young showed you how. Absolutely. And I put my heart, my foot, my soul in this recipe so that you all can make it and enjoy it as well. All you have to have on the side of this, just make you some plain white rice. Pop you some dinner rolls in that oven. Maybe some fresh green beans on the side or a salad. And you are set. Okay? And you don't have to worry about the filling coming out. The filling's not going to come out. The filling won't come out. It's going to be nice and juicy. And you all are going to love this. <laughs> My goodness. It's late here at the Young's house. If you all enjoyed this video, hey, give me a thumbs up. Mm -hmm. And if you haven't subscribed, make sure you subscribe. Make sure you click on the notification bell so that you, so that you can be notified every time Gina Young uploads an awesome recipe. Absolutely. Look at this. And as always, God bless each and every one of you. Thank you all for watching. Have a great night. Good night. Mm -hmm. Okay, let me show you the presentation. Gonna wipe my hands off, guys. Look at that. That right there is a pork dinner that you want to serve tomorrow. <laughs> God bless you all. Until the next video, good night.